buenas tardes. Okay, good evening. Muy buenas tardes por acompañarnos. Good evening. Thank you for joining us here in Casa Árabe for this talk, which we've organized to mark the opening of this wonderful exhibition. We're very fortunate to have with us uh, three of the artists from that exhibition, as well as the curator of that exhibition. And since we wanted to take advantage of their being here to finish putting uh, the, their own touches on the exhibition, which we will visit later, but it also gave us a great chance to hear from them about the Libyan context, a country which is so near and yet so far uh, from us in terms of knowledge and our understanding of its contemporary history, a country which, for various reasons, we've not heard enough about and perhaps also we've um, what we've heard has been rather one-sided and especially today in the current moment with all the things that have been happening since 2011 Libya now seems to be a country which only goes through very difficult circumstances like the ones we've witnessed these last months or years. And I just wanted to give you a bit of context about why we thought it was uh, really important to take advantage of their being here so that they could not so that they could share with us some of the their messages through their works, but also have a chance to hear from them firsthand about the context in which they are doing their work what the cities they live in are like for young artists and what they see in terms of opportunities to build the civil society which the country needs so desperately. So first we're going to hear from Nashla, Nashla Lajeli, who's the curator of the exhibition and the founder of well, a foundation which is called the Noor Arts Project which is our uh, partner, our sister foundation in this exhibition and bringing these artists to Casa Árabe. Nuna Arts Project was founded in 2012. She founded it in London. She is uh, Libyan background, but she lives in London currently. And in 2012, after all that, uh, burst of vitality and, and search for freedom, which we saw in so many capitals in the Arab world. She decided to take advantage of that uh, opportunity to show the world the work of artists in her country of origin, in Libya. And so she created this organization, Noon Arts Project, and she's going to talk to us uh, briefly about this association and also about the meaning of this exhibition that we are hosting here. After Nasla, we will give the floor to two of the artists, and I'll introduce each of them in turn later. Nasla, go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Nuria. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming, and uh, I want to say my special thanks to Casa Arabe for hosting us this evening, and uh, also to uh, Repsol Foundation and Aris Bank for sponsoring and uh, making this event actually happen, and also to thank all the artists who, are, I mean, I have three of them here with me uh, this evening, and also the artists who are back home in Libya. So I'm going to start by just going to generally talk about Libya as, as a landscape. Um, unfortunately, uh, Libya is considered a, a cultural desert, a very unknown um, country culturally, uh, mainly because of uh, its uh, sort of history with strife and conflict, um, where art and culture somehow seem to be missing from the conversation if anyone is uh, mentioning Libya. Uh, in reality, however, the country is quite um, uh, rich uh, in its uh, ethnic makeup uh, in terms of its, uh, civil the civilizations that have come across and settled in Libya, uh, from Romans to Greeks to Jews to Arabs to Ottomans to the Amazigh, who are, you know, have been there for, for <laughs> the longest, I think, Africans. 
And so all of these uh, civilizations have left a mark uh, in this landscape that I call Libya. I uh, founded Noon Arts in 2012 uh, after the Arab Spring, uh, where I realized there was something missing about uh, Libyan art and contemporary artists and that not a lot is known about them uh, internationally. So we f I found it, I mean, I created a small initiative uh, in 2012 and our first exhibition was uh, <laughs> in, uh, in, uh, in, in Tripoli, uh, no, in London, and we were sponsored by British Council uh, and it was a collective of eight contemporary uh, Libyan artists and uh, it was received with high acclaim. And that sort of pushed me to uh, do more work and uh, to collaborate more and to know more and to find more artists uh, because um, it's very difficult to, uh, to find artists in Libya uh, as there isn't really a proper database uh, to, 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 to seek them. And so, so far uh, I have exhibited, uh, I have curated 13 uh, exhibitions in uh, Tripoli, in London, in Malta, in Italy, and now uh, in Madrid. And with each uh, project, it has been an, an amazing journey. Um, uh, we work, collaborated with uh, a lot of uh, sort of uh, different institutions, the Arab Bridge Center um, uh, in London, uh, the Benetton Foundation in Italy. Uh, we also got sponsored by British Council, by uh, Medavia, by the Corentia Group. And uh, now, luckily, we've got, you know, we're being supported by uh, Repsol Foundation and uh, the Aris Bank. And also a lot of private individuals uh, have helped us a lot to make uh, the projects happen because logistically it's very, very difficult. And we are working in a very difficult um, situation at the moment due to the conflict. And uh, uh, But luckily, uh, we have succeeded uh, in... Um, uh, shedding some light on what's happen happening culturally uh, in Libya. I would like to mention that my interest in the arts, I am an architect by profession, but my interest in the arts really, uh, especially in Libyan art, was nurtured by my late father, who was a supporter of Libyan artists. And I grew up with uh, sort of uh, a lot of paintings uh, by Libyan artists. And so I'm going to show you two, two, two pieces. This one by Mohamed El Baroudi, and this one by Abdul Muttalib Fahima. Um, both of these, I mean, uh, Baroudi has passed away, but this is uh, an image of uh, Tripoli and the Ghazala fountain. Uh, it's um, based, it's, it's, it's set in 1950, and it shows you the cosmopolitan uh, life of Tripoli as a city itself. And then what this iconic um, uh, fountain and statue, which was, uh, uh, sort of uh, designed by an Italian sculpture in the 30s when uh, Tripoli, you know, modern Tripoli was built by the Italians, of course. <laughs> and this statue and how it became an iconic landmark uh, and uh, a sign of civility in Tripoli and how Tripolitanians sort of also accepted it as part of their city. And in this painting, you can see also the Sufi procession of the Hadra which is something that has been uh, more or less disappearing from uh, Libyan culture due to uh, fanaticism. And also there's a foreign lady uh, taking a, a photograph of what's happening. So all of this has disappeared. Uh, the, the Ghazala was, uh, I don't know, what happened. one morning everybody woke up in 2014 and it's gone. Uh, the Sufi uh, sort of uh, Hadras more or less disappearing from our tradition. And then we have this painting. It's a beautiful painting by Fahima. And it is a painting of depicting the Hadra, the, the Sufi uh, sort of celebrations of the Prophet's um, uh, birthday that we have every year. And again, uh, this celebrates the, uh, the identity of what, what uh, Libyan heritage is or Tripolitanian heritage is. And so what I really want to say is that without the arts, uh, I mean, part of uh, who we are sort of disappears, really, and, and is not known. And now I want to introduce uh, Hadia Ghana, uh, an artist, and also uh, the first Libyan to be building the first private museum uh, in Libya. 
and uh, she is one of the artists that I have collaborated on on several occasions, and her work is uh, exhibited here tonight. And Taqwa Abu Barnusa, another Libyan young lady who is an artist and also a curator and who has her own uh, sort of NGO call, called Warak Foundation, uh, where she is... Uh, working very hard with the local artists and local talent to, to, uh, to see what we can do uh, uh, about um, the visual art scene in, in, in Libya. So take it away, girls. <laughs> I hope it will be in order, because my mind is not in order, so I hope I count on the photo to uh, do the thing. So that's one of the... Uh, sorry, uh, Hadia, no se ve bien con la luz. Bajamos un poquito la luz, ¿no? Oh, yeah. Gracias. They are going to make it. Un poquito más, por favor. Will fall asleep. Yes. Okay. So I would compare this photo uh, with uh, our honeymoon photo after the revolution. Uh, so everybody happy with uh, uh, these uh, nice lanterns, flying wishes in the in the sky, and um, and still while flying the wishes in the sky, already already in 2011, some people, some artists were asking Ain. Ain means where? And uh, uh, it's, uh, it was a bit, uh, when, I, when, I saw, when I took this picture, I was saying, oh, that's the, the young generation is a bit uh, uh, dark uh, seeing. Because it says, it says in small, la i'mar fi bilad damar, meaning no, uh, in a way, no resurrection in a, in a destroyed country. So um, I kept looking at Facebook images and following, uh, following mostly a bit like uh, an anthropologist. In, in a, uh, I was looking at oh, these like hopes and reality images that were popping out in the Facebook. And of course, in the 2011, if you ask the Libyan what you want, you say, we want to be like Dubai. So it's like uh, bling bling, big towers, all shiny, all perfect. And it, here it's in 2015, the dream of, uh, the pyramid of dream is like bread, oil, gas, uh, tomato paste and oil for, for food. I mean. So this, of course, uh, since, since the start, even in, during the in Gaddafi times, Libyans were very happy, always, always in a way, because if you find bread, you're happy. If you find tomato paste, you're happy. If you find uh, butter, you're happy. And it was like daily small happinesses in a way. And here you see the whole thing there, you know, bread, a car, uh, you know, petrol, gas, and, uh, <laughs> and I don't know what is the, the, the blue can. So happiness, yes, but in a way this built uh, a kind of anger. Yeah? Uh, so even see the Facebook li likes because our, our, our life is also, there's the real life, but we have the Facebook life that is very real as well. Um, so you have this kind of Facebook likes. No, aggressive one. This is a wall in a, in a public school. Um, I don't know <laughs> who's, who's drawn on the wall, but uh, uh, a bit aggressive. Uh, this kind of uh, discussions, the starting of the discussions, because we grew up in a, in a country where you don't have a lot of discussions, uh, politically, but also socially. You're either with or without, and you're either for or not for. And, and this was the start of the, of the discussion for me. The walls were full of scribbles, they are still full of scribbles, where you have, like here, Omran is one of the, 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 the I call them the boys, who, uh, who held the first one, Gaddafi. Then he disappeared and came back in a box. So a friend of mine did this, uh, uh, prints of him all around the city, uh, like to um, a memory, to, uh, to honor his, uh, his memory. And you see someone uh, set fire under to make it dark, to, to make him disappear. And you have all sorts of little discussions uh, on, on the sides. So for me, it's a very positive image because you have, yes, aggressivity, but there is discussions. And these are the boys that, <laughs> that we see. So all the militias, these are the militias. No? 
young kids they grew up in in uh, in, in the war and they feel like they are in a in a game uh, and they are in a game in a way uh, this is uh, a mangaka a libyan mangaka i'm very proud of it's uh, abdullah Hadiya. Uh, he has a very nice way to, to uh, resume things. So it's him here drawing, and a young guy passing. Oh, what he's doing? Curiosity, of course. He said, oh, that's marvelous what you're doing, what you're drawing. So he says, thank you. He said, but your place is not in Libya. Yeah. <laughs> so fleeing reality, always going away, going away from the country. So in all this... Uh, for me, for me, I saw uh, I'm more of an observer uh, in in, uh, in Libya. Uh, I'm one of the lucky persons. I grew up in a uh, artistic house. My father was a, was an artist. My mother was a kindergarten teacher, which is very similar to an artist. Uh, I grew up in a nice house, which is this one. Um, and in a way, um, I knew, I was sure that after the revolution, it will be a big mess for quite a long time. Uh, not because we're dummies, just because we are natural people. And after all revolution, you have a period of, let's say, adolescence, uh, where you have all the, you know, you need to find yourself. So uh, I wanted to stay in Libya. So I said, okay, I have to do something that make me stay here uh, in a good state, mental state. Um, I asked my mother, and uh, we decided to, uh, to take the house, the family house, uh, to make it um, um, a museum, yes, but it's a way to the cultural house based on the work of my father. Uh, so this was the first maquette, in a way. Uh, that's, the, that's the thing. Now, the concept of the, the, the house for the moment, if you say, oh, what you're going to show, I would say my, my father's work. What you're going to program, I would say, we'll see. Uh, what you're doing now, for, for me, it's a work in progress. Um, my, the, the, the foundation or the, or the house is, a, is a, an artistic work, in a way. I see it this way. Uh, because it moves and it grows depending on the situations. Um, it's a bit uh, social work in the same time because uh, um, I try to involve um, maximum of people I can, artists, but not necessarily. Uh, most of the people who come, sometimes they come and they say, what are you doing? Why are they working? They say, what is it that we're doing? You know? So I say, oh, it's a cultural house. Is, is there money uh, for this? I mean, you you gaining some money with it? I say, no. Okay, that's nice. And they continue doing the work. So uh, uh, it's like a, 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 you use the thing, a, melt, a melting pot. It's a, it's a platform when people meet, uh, doing something positive in a way, either working or, or discussing. Here, here it's uh, two young um, architects and two young engineers on solar power. Uh, and the, the one pointing is, was extremely happy. It was the first, uh, the first day we met. And uh, he was extremely happy because he said, I always want to uh, put solar power in Libya, and nobody wants it because we are an oil-rich co um, country. So everybody is pushed away because, I mean, we're rich. Uh, so that's the, the start of the, of, the, uh, of the structure, let's say. Uh, that's mostly for two things I did this structure. Uh, practically to, to enlarge the, the space. Uh, secondly, to, to move it from a private house to an institution, visually. And uh, thirdly, psychologically, because this kind of structure is uh, technically very difficult. And the first thing when a Libyan engineer or so sees this plan, he would say, do it out, don't do it here. No. Uh, we cannot do it here. We don't have enough knowledge. Uh, we, you'll have too much problems. It's better to, uh, if you want it to be done, do it some, in some other way. And I want it to do, be done by Libyans in Libya with local material. So um, this is a kind of a team I have. Uh, the young architect is under the iron. Uh, the one in the middle on the other side is the iron uh, responsible, let's say. And we're doing it day by day, uh, and uh, and 
you know, kind of repairing the, the mistakes we're doing. If it breaks from one side, we can, <laughs> we're engineering from one side. Uh, which is, the, the thing that is good is all the engineers who come there starts, start looking and asking questions. I say, look, I, I will call the, the, engine, the, 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 the person responsible, come and discuss, and then you have discussions, how oh, you should do this. It's, it's technical, it's like a, a shop talk, we say, but uh, in a way, uh, it's a start. Here you have different generation. Uh, the, 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 the person in, in white is uh, my father's friend, so he represents the first generation of artists in Libya. Uh, the young lady uh, here is, is uh, his um, uh, niece, is a niece. Takwa knows her well as well. She's a, a self-taught uh, artist. Uh, so you have uh, different generation mixing. You have people... These are my friends from the seaside. We do kite surf together, and they came to sand, sandpaper the, the walls, and very happy, simply, <laughs> to do to do this. Uh, this is my mother's friend, my te my kindergarten teaching teacher, who came to you know to put the tiles in order of color. It's a very nice kindergarten kind of uh, uh, thing, and they were quite happy to do that. Uh, this person is a DNA researcher, but she likes to work on her own. So when she comes, nobody else will come. And she, she welds, she builds, she, she learns day by day the things that we, we're doing. This is my uh, friend, iron uh, worker, thinking with a donkey. And uh, you know, he's just under the structure. Uh, meaning it's also, they come whenever they want. The, op the door is open. And it's a place where you can sit, sleep, relax, uh, meet people. Uh, because there's always someone around. Uh, these are kids from the from the my knee, my nephew. I mean, different kids, and they start already playing. Uh, and that's the point, you know. You, it's it's a place to join people. Yes, for art, around art, but it's for life, you know. For, for it's a. And these are the kids grown up. Uh, they play as well. They are in the kids' library, a place I call the kids' library. And they pulled out the, the games. They are all NGOs, and these will be the. It's a, it's a group. They are uh, political NGOs. They are the future leaders group. And when they came, it's the place they chose. They just all sat there and started playing uh, games. So, the 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 thing is, I'm I'm not showing uh, artwork here, uh, because artwork is. Uh, part of life, I think, it's in my view. And in a way, if you have a nice environment of living environment, uh, you can start, uh, you know, relax and think and produce uh, works that are a bit more like uh, uh, mature. We produce a lot of art, but it's erratic, it's aggressive, it's, uh, it's non-consistent, uh, and all these things are marvelous, yes, but they need uh, stability, they need the resting. And we don't have uh, places like this in Libya. We don't have places, public places don't exist. Uh, cultural places are extremely rare and they also disappear. Maybe we have two, three that uh, stayed, but they disappear very quickly. So uh, the more we, are, we have places like this, the better we will feel, I think. And Taqwa will take after. <laughs> Thank you. Um. My name is Taqwa and I'm 20 years old. Um, my journey with art and culture started uh, in 2014. And usually for people in my age, whenever you ask them something about their study, about their career, their interests, they will start with a story that uh, it's either happened in 2011 or 2014, which is the time of the revolution and the time of uh, the civil war that happened in Tripoli in 2014. And um, I was too young when the revolution happened, but um, in 2014 I was uh, just graduating high school and looking forward to start like a career in the art and study something that I really love and do a lot of things and practice art and do paintings and exhibitions and all of that. But then like reality happens and I, you know, I, I was smashed by reality. 
And I was I was um, an angry teenager, really angry because there was nothing. And when there is nothing, you have uh, a lot of space and a lot of time, energy, and more opportunities to change and create. Or in uh, another term, experiment, and which means that like you can try whatever you want, and no one will judge you because no one is doing anything anyway. So um, this is where everything started. Uh, it was uh, a civil war and we had to go to the mountains because we couldn't stay in Tripoli for a while and this is where I found out that I'm really interested in practicing calligraphy but I was also interested a lot in the whole art and culture industry and how art galleries function and what do they do and what do they organize and about curating and all these stuff. Uh, so um, there was a lot of like a lot of time, like unneeded time. So I was practicing for like six hours a day and I was uh, like uh, watching some stuff and following some like art galleries and applying to many universities around the world. And I got accepted, but I never managed to get to any one of these because uh, the situation is, is very difficult and you can't really study what you want. So uh, when, the civil war ended in 2014. Everything started to be okay after a while. Uh, I enrolled in the art university in Tripoli, and I wish I never did. Uh, it was only for like one semester and a half, and then I got expelled, uh, gladly. <laughs> but then um, I, I thought like, okay, if, if the situation changed, the whole economical crisis and all of these is going on, uh, I should not like stay um, uh, empty-handed with no education, no experience, no knowledge, nothing. So uh, I took this really humble studio in my mom's school and uh, it was only for me at the beginning to practice my artworks and um, you know, have some time for my own, invite friends over and do some, you know, stuff here and there. Um, this was like in 2015 when I uh, decided that um, I should start my own project or my own initiative. Uh, and again, I was angry because there was uh, like no active art galleries, no uh, organizations that I can turn to for help, advice, or anything. Um, so uh, this was like the beginning and uh, started developing when uh, all like friends started to come over. Uh, then friends of friends started to come over and sometimes people I've never met to my own studio. Uh, and also the, the the children, the students in the school started skipping classes and come to the studio to paint and do stuff. So it was, you know, time for me to think, okay, maybe I can do this in a in a larger scale. So it's not only for me, for m for my own good, but uh, also for people, for the society, for people who are like-minded. Uh, and uh, somehow it was my own way of uh, being self-educated or self-thought about like uh, being a culture manager or a curator. Uh, after a year of like studying, observing and working, uh, my dear mother agreed to fund the project and um, it was a choice of either do the project or save this money to go abroad and study. And, um, uh, it was it was more into like the project and it was you know an exciting experience because I, w I was only 17 and I had no idea about like what am I going to do you know people can't really just open up art spaces in a country where there are no art spaces um, so um, we rented the space and uh, we started working on like uh, organizing exhibitions and discussions at the beginning. Um, I had no experience at all, and um, but it was you know the the most exciting thing because um, for me it was more about learning by doing, and so far I feel like I learned so much only by uh, doing a lot of endless flaws and mistakes, um, and. In this space, we used to um, host exhibitions for emerging artists. 
and also uh, host school visits on a regular basis, um, uh, some like workshops, uh, other events, all related to art or, or culture. Uh, the space was uh, about to, like, the whole thing was about focusing not only on the process of art, but also like the result. Um, which means that we provided uh, a space for artists to come in a daily basis, weekly basis, and um, where are like uh, different, you know, like packages uh, where they can either like use the space or use like art supplies or uh, just uh, gather together to discuss uh, specific topics about like what's going on in the art scene in general. Um, like, and um, I remember we had like uh, many, many difficulties, uh, just like any other project, uh, starting with the lack of experience, lack of knowledge, ending up with like the funding and uh, planning this, uh, correctly and in a time of conflict and also in, in, in a very unstable uh, situation because uh, we couldn't really plan, plan anything long term. Um, you can plan something for next month and something happens in the country and all your plans are like uh, goes to waste. Uh, but you know this also kept us um, motivated to um, change the situation and, and the more challenges there are, the more value we create somehow. And uh, what happened in 2017, last year, uh, is that uh, the space was shut down by force. That was in uh, May 2017, after we organized an exhibition about human rights conditions in Libya. And uh, the exhibition was uh, in you know, somehow to encourage the young artists to um, to work on topics that provoke society to ask questions, and especially the young generation to ask questions about like what's going on, about like certain topics, about their lives, about their identities, the culture, and uh, I don't know that I don't know whether like uh, the reason that. Uh, the space was shut down is because of like the topic itself or because uh, of the um, of like the mixture of women and men and these kind of issues but anyway um, this means that we achieved somehow an impact either negative or positive um, you know for a while after this happened we thought like we can't really continue working again and it's very risky uh, such stuff uh, but later on this year, we said like, okay, let's take a break locally, but work internationally and in, in promoting the local artists. Uh, the thing is that R Libya is really, really isolated country, and um, uh, you know, even like uh, artists in different cities don't really know each other's or like what what their what the other artists are producing or what are they working on. So we wanted to break the ice somehow. So um, we curated the first international exhibition in Barcelona last year. And um, since then, we curated different exhibitions for emerging artists, uh, mostly. Um, after that, we wanted to work uh, locally again. Um, and this is when we came up with um, another solution. Uh, we wanted to create alternatives. Um, by finding other solutions. If there isn't any spaces we can do our work, then why not uh, use public spaces? Well, public spaces uh, do like somehow um, uh, get more audience and it reaches uh, a larger uh, audience. And um, we chose for this project the old city in Tripoli. Uh, the old city is really known for its heritage and also uh, because uh, somehow uh, uh, at some uh, time it was um, an art hub and many uh, events, exhibitions, um, cultural events happens there. So we wanted to continue, uh, continue making this city a, a cultural hub but uh, we wanted to take it to public spaces where everybody can find us, everybody can ask questions, everybody can practice art in public spaces. Uh, and in Libya, this was like um, very risky 
are also very um, daring somehow and very new. Uh, we started with um, a discussion uh, with Hadia and uh, a colleague uh, named Reem Hageg who's interested in performance art in Libya. And, um, you know, we started by only doing a, a discussion about, like, art in public spaces in Libya and how we can develop this and where can we take this, in, like, in the next years. Um, after that, we organized... Um, uh, outdoor uh, outdoor uh, uh, cinema and exhibitions in public spaces and the alleys of the old city. The whole thing was how to use the city as a gallery and uh, attract people who live there and also people from the art community together uh, together in uh, during Ramadan, which is um, what we found uh, most likely to be the perfect time of the month because everyone can be there. Um, like uh, even socially everyone is somehow connected to each other's families go to each other's and it's very crowded so it was, it was the perfect timing um, the exhibitions were uh, really good really interesting for us as a foundation because uh, it was our first time to work on public spaces but also for the audience because um, some of the locals of the old city for example uh, know that there are cultural centers in the old city. They never been to any of them. And when we did these uh, exhibitions outdoor, they were coming and asking questions. Uh, at the beginning, we were not welcomed at all. And uh, the kids were throwing us with stones and get out of like our streets and so on. But like uh, after two months of the projects, um, these children and also like other uh, young people were really helping us and uh, they saved us from many disasters over there. Uh, I remember one day um, we came uh, in the second day of the exhibition, we found the artworks gone and we thought that they're stolen or missing, but it was the children who, uh, who, um, who brought them to their houses to save them um, from other children. So it was it was really interesting to see how their uh, mentality changed and how they somehow became more friendly, more welcoming, and and so on. Uh, in in different uh, exhibitions, we used different alleys where you go from one station to another to find the exhibitions. And for many people, f like who goes to exhibitions from the art community and so on. Uh, they never really went inside the old city. They only seen the Marcos Arch, which is uh, this place, but they don't go further. They don't go deep inside the city because of like, um, yeah, because of fear, because they think it's risky to go inside, and sometimes it is. But <laughs> anyway, uh, it's worth it's worth the risk sometimes to to ask people about like, what, what do you think? And you know, to engage with the audience there. And this project in particular was uh, really successful because we achieved the impact we wanted to uh, with uh, really limited uh, resources and also in a really limited time. Uh, but we thought like, maybe we can do this again and, and maybe this can be like a really good way to develop the audience not only the artists. Uh, after like a month, we uh, did this improvised exhibition in, uh, um, in Saraya, which is the city center of Tripoli. And everyone was there to, um, to just practice art freely with like different generations and, you know, children, young adults, young, like old men, and you know, no one really knows the other. Um, Everyone was so happy that they're trying something for the first time uh, and they keep asking questions and this is what we want to achieve, that, uh, you know, art can be a tool for dialogue, that um, it can be something that, uh, for like social change and these experiments showed us that we can continue even without a space, without a physical space. Um, it is very difficult of course because you have to install everything in one day and you have to expect that someone might attack you you have to 
have a lot of expectations in mind of what might happen and a lot of things happen to a lot of people but um, we try to manage to to secure the situation and also um, make make a good value of the whole situation um, uh, only recently we wanted to organize uh, an art residency in a city in the desert but we couldn't because last month was um, it was raining rockets in the city so <laughs> it was impossible to do so but um, I feel like the whole difficulties of the art scene is uh, how not to stop when they want you to stop um, if it if it shuts shuts down from like this side you have to find another alternative and keep moving and keep working on finding other solutions uh, basically this is like the summary of what art foundation and we seek to do more uh, also both locally and internationally to promote for these young artists who are really doing more than their best uh, in, in a time where there are no resources and no motivation at all.